Welcome back, everyone, for this week's episode of our Smoky Mountain Wrestling Podcast. This is Smoky Mountain Wrestling, episode number 43 from November the 21st of 1992. Doc, we are still in Bluff City, Tennessee at the Sullivan East High School Gymnasium. How you doing this week, man? Well, as always, I'm doing fan-fucking-tastic. That's real nice of you. Harper, what about you, man? You watched the Golden Girls this morning to get you prepped and lubed up for the this week's episode? That's nice. Look, Blanche is a good girl. She's just a, you know, she's a bit of a whore. Is she? <laughs> yeah. Is she a Jezebel, you. like Dusty said a few weeks ago on she's NWA Jezebel. Saturday night? But she's my Jezebel. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Harper. I, I bet you talk- Blanche sucks a mean one, dude, in her day. Wow. Christ. Here's a better question. <laughs> Step out of the way, Menace. So if we're going to talk 80s TV, how many of the chicks on Who's the Boss would you have nailed? Oh, my God. Who's the boss? Yeah. Fuck. The mom, there's the grandma who's a freak, and then there's a, a young Alyssa, Alyssa Milano. So you got God. lots of your, There's layers to this. I was in love with Alyssa Milano. Who wasn't was our age? God damn. Uh, uh, she didn't do nothing for me. Uh, oh, you're so gay. No, no, no. Yeah. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. I liked uh, Lisa Turtle. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, she was hot. But that uh did you damn right she was. I had a thing for her, bro. Oh. You know who my dad loved? We'd have had to dip we'd have had to dip Alyssa Milano in a bowl of chocolate for him to respond. Yeah, yeah, uh, go uh, fuck uh, yourself. My dad uh loved the chick on uh a different world. The one that was all uh kinda she was like a black southern bell kinda. Oh, Whitley. <laughs> yeah. My dad was like, oh. Man. Have you have you seen her nowadays? No. Dude, she looks like she's fucking 70 years old. Really? Oh, Fuck. she looked. Man, I wouldn't touch her with your dick. That's nice. And she's know. black. Well, I mean, <laughs> that, that don't have anything to do with it. She looks old. She's you know, Harper's old. got a point. Harper's got a point. Okay. Uh, uh, I, mean, uh, I got to Google her. Lisa Turtle did it for me back in the day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, bro. She's yeah. She was hot. Damn she's right, mess, she though. was. She, she turned out a mess too in her personal life. Well, she's they all did, didn't they? I mean, they were all turned out to be a mess back in the day. I mean, which ones didn't? Kelly Kapowski. Oh, she was all right. I mean, I you take know. fucking Lisa Turtle fucking over. Uh, wait, which one was there? Kelly Kapowski? What? She was the one. Tiffany was the main one. And when oh, okay. Tiffany yeah, Amber yeah. got the, got the uh, implants, dude, it was off the charts. Yeah, she was hot, and I prefer fuck Lisa Turtle than the other, the fucking, uh, the, uh, the feminist broad. Jim, Jesse, Jesse Spano? Yeah, fuck you, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, but Jesse Spano <laughs> went on to Showgirls, and we got to see everything. Uh, oh, fuck, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, she didn't do nothing for me. Whatever. All right, are we going to get into Smoky Mountain Wrestling? We're talking about <laughs> 80s TV right now. Jesus. These people came here for Smoky Mountain, not 80s TV. All right, so let's get into things. We are, again, we're still in Bluff City, Tennessee, Sullivan East High School Gymnasium. Uh, Bob Cottle and Dutch Mantel kick off, the sh- kick off the show as usual. Dutch holds up some great signs in this week's show where he tells us with his two signs, I am naked beneath my clothes. Bob Cottle tells us that they've got another paid commercial from the master Kevin Sullivan. The main event will be the Rock and Roll Express and Ronnie Garvin versus the Heavenly Bodies and Jim Cornette. Dutch also tells us that his guest on Down and Dirty will be with Jim Cornette and the Heavenly Bodies that was taped earlier in the day. Doc, I'll throw it to you first. Any thoughts on the opening segment of the show? Just ready to hit the ring, pal. I love Dutch's sign, though. Harper, what about you? I'm sitting here looking at Jasmine Guy. Focus. <laughs> can, you, can you focus, please? Oh, yeah, focus. yeah. Let's go. Okay. Would you still hit it? I mean, are you looking at a current picture of her? Uh, Yeah, but I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> oh, he wouldn't claim it. Uh-uh. Keep, keep that one under wraps. 
keep, keep it under wrap. Oh, boy. All right, we'll go to, to the first match of the night. It is Robbie Eagle and Jeff Daniels versus the Stud Stable. At the start of the match, the Fantastics join the commentary as Dutch runs off, claiming he's got to make a phone call. Uh, ironic, he always does things like that. Bobby and Jackie basically tell Bob Cottle that they got fucked last week when Dutch came in and gave a quick count on Jackie. Uh, when uh, when was it? Uh, when I think it was Golden who got the pin on Jackie. Uh, Bobby Fulton even uses Gibson's old line when Bobby Fulton says, if Dutch wants to keep getting involved, that... Bobby will put something on him that Ajax won't wash off, which, wow, what a line. Uh, It's getting used repeatedly here. Uh, We get back to the match. The stud stable win when Fuller puts Daniels in the hammerlock of his on the ground. Uh, I'll throw it to Hopper first. Uh, What are your thoughts on the commentary in the match if you're done looking at Jasmine Guy and whacking off? He's still whacking off. Doc, what about you? Well, we're back with Ajax, so maybe they're a good sponsor of the Smoky Mountain. Just I noticed in the in the match that Jeff Daniels has terrible ring gear. Yeah. And really just a bad look all the way around. Well, Hopper's back. There you go. I, I'd ask all you right. uh, what you thought. I mean, you must have been whacking off, so uh you done? Well, there was no tag, huh? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nah, if, tag? What about that? What is it? Tag? Oh, tag? Uh, no, no tag. Maybe when you were tagging Jasmine Guy, but no, not mm-hmm. not in this match. Anyway, uh, any other thoughts before I move forward? Nope. We go from that match to a promo, and uh, here we go, Doc. Uh, I gotta. I, I I'm sorry, man. This is. Uh, I'm not gonna sit there and oversell this, but uh, God bless Robert Fuller. He's a fucking legend, man. All right, fans, and women right now. I don't want to talk to you. Stable. I want Dutch Man Town out here. Oh, I want a man. real number one commentator out here. Not a little swanly fella like you. you, you to somebody, that, somebody that can get in the ring and go one, two, three and give you a win, I guess. He ought to be, you ought to get down and really thank this guy. Let me say one thing. I had to make a phone call, and I wish them fantastic to stay out here so I could whoop both of them at the same time. They run off like the yellow egg sucking dogs they are. Dutch, I want to make a proposal to you. But I want to say this before I say anything else. This man right here has got potential to be the best referee that ever climbed in a square circle. I know how he wrestles. I know what his career has been made of. Dutch Mantell is not only a great athlete, he's a serious friend of mine. Dutch, I want to tell you, this don't mean now, if you accept this, that you have to stop commentating. Because, brother, without your commentary, this Smoky Mountain would be garbage, that's for sure. But Dutch, what it is, me and Jimmy talked it over. We said you're the man of the hour. We want you to be part of our stable. We want you to come in. You'll have all the privileges that me and Jimmy have of a stable member. And Dutch, this right here is to prove exactly the way I feel. Tennessee Stud, that's on the way right there, baby. And I want you to have it, Dutch. Put it in. I guess that's our answer. I guess that's our answer, Jimmy. Dutch, I accept. I accept. You know, Rob, this is one of the greatest days of my life, and I am proud and honored to be a part of it. Fans, we'll be back right after this. Oh, uh, Doc, go ahead. You first. Did he call Bob a little spindly fella? <laughs> I thought he called him a little slimy fella. Oh, okay. yeah. I thought he said, I don't want to talk to a little slimy fella like you. Okay. <laughs> that, thought for... that, whatever it was, it was awesome because I love <laughs> me some Robert Fuller. Robert um, Fuller is the fucking man, dude. It's just. Awesome. Yeah, I'm all, on this all, big all, Fuller kick right now, man. Me too. We, we've we been talking about that off air. And so, you know, I just – and Dutch is now aligned with them. And I just want to know exactly – I'd like a, a full list of membership privileges to the stud, stud stable because yeah. Dutch gets all the, the, the rights and, and privileges. I'd kind of like to know what that is. Yeah. I want to go too. Mind, yeah, I want to sign up too, Hopper. Sign me up. Shit. I want to be a, a – a, a stud stable member. I, I bet that man, jacket he has. Me too. How much yeah. pussy you think they got back in the day? Stud stable. Shit. Mm. You think they Barbara. kept up with the rock and roll? No. No. Okay. Just thought about uh, it. No. No. <laughs> okay. 
All right, uh, we go from that uh, promo to uh, Bullet Bob Armstrong is back, so let's hear what he's got to say right here. All right, fans, and with us right now, I hear smoking my Commissioner Bob Armstrong. Commissioner, I know that you have spent many, many hours this past week thinking about what happened, what Kevin Sullivan did to Brian Lee right here on Smoky Mountain Wrestling last week. That's right. I've given a lot of thought, and uh, I just want all the fans to know that Brian Lee is recovering, but it's going to be a slow recovery because the boy was injured pretty badly. So he's going to come back, and I've got a few words from him. We sent our camera crew out to his home, and he's got a few words for the fan. If you want to, Bob, we'll listen to those comments now. Since the first day I stepped in the ring to become a professional wrestler, I never in my wildest <laughs> dreams thought I'd be sitting in a bed like this. I don't mean to laugh. Face beat up, ribs broken, and all because of you, Kevin Sullivan. You know, when you're 6'6", 280 pounds like I am, you never figure on being hurt, or at least to where you can't wrestle anymore. I tell you what, the only reason I'm here today is because I had a guardian angel over me. And Kevin Sullivan, you better start praying and hope that the same thing's looking over you that was looking over me. Because the next time we come face to face, it's not going to be prime time stretched out. It's going to be you. You know, Bob, when Thanksgiving thunder rolls, it's going to be a sound heard around the world because I've got a man coming in for the master Kevin Sullivan. The monster returns, the Mongolian stomper. And Kevin Sullivan, you're going to feel the sting of that boot on your chest, brother. You'll carry the imprint of that 14, size 14 Mongolian stomping boot on your chest for the rest of your life. Now, I can't tell you how bad this Mongolian stomper is, but I've got some film here of the Mongolian stomper beating one of the top stars in this sport today, the King Jerry Lawler, in his own hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, right in the middle of one, two, three. And this is for you, Master Kevin Sullivan, and all your followers. A picture's worth a thousand words, so watch this film and weep. Thanksgiving thunder will roll over you. Of a jam packed Mid South Coliseum with better than 11,500 people crammed in. I just uh, wanted, to land, I wanted Lance Russell's voice to play for a minute. But, uh, Doc, I'll throw it to you first and thoughts on the promo and primetime Brian Lee sitting in his, uh, I'd assume, yeah. his bedroom where he banged a few rats. Uh, over the well, that's years. funny that you say that because my note was <laughs> that bed can't handle PBL banging rats in it. Come on. <laughs> that little, those little brass, yeah, headboard bullshit, <laughs> rinky dink bed. Yeah, Jesus Christ! And he's looking sad, like somebody kicked his puppy dog and shit. And I spent the majority of the interview trying to find out, trying to figure out who the two posters were. The the yes, the the sugar tits on the left and the rock and roll guy. I was, I was the closest I could come. Was my my guess was Janet Jackson on the left and Eddie Van Halen on the right. I have no guess on that. I didn't we know? I, I, if it's I mean, I thought or... I thought to myself, who are those posters of? But it just wasn't something that was a priority to me. There, I, I just the, the immediate reaction when they first pan over to it on that rinky dink ass <laughs> brass bed was first. Well, first thing I said is, is that his bed and bedroom? <laughs> Two, I was like, if it is, that shit, how many rats were banged in there? Three, yeah. I don't even know if it's possible that it's his, because that bed probably wouldn't be able to withstand six, eight, two 285 pounds and whatever. Uh, Harper, I'll throw it to you, man. You got anything else? Yeah, it, I, th- I think a 15-year-old uh, kid decorated his fucking bedroom. Because <laughs> yeah, I kept trying, because it's, it, I was trying to think of 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 how old he is, and it's like, why would you still have shit like that on your fucking wall? Yeah, it's probably <laughs> probably because it's not his bedroom. That's that's the that, to me that would be the most logical uh, answer. But yeah, who knows? yeah, maybe he who cut knows? it at the rat's house that he was banging that night. Uh, maybe in the in the ki- in in the rat's house at the in in the rat's kid's bedroom. Who knows? That's there wild. you go. There you go. Now you're thinking. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, in all seriousness, from this promo, they you know Bullet Bob mentions the the Stomper and facing Sullivan at Thanksgiving Thunder, and then they throw it to 
the video package with the Stomper laying it in to the legend, Jerry the King Lawler at the Mid-South Coliseum uh, with another legend, Lance Russell, calling the action. You heard it there at the very end of it. Uh, by the way, there are 11,000 people in the Mid-South Coliseum for that match, and the Stomper wins the match and regains the uh, Southern Heavyweight title. You know, that was a staple of the territories. You you would get video from other territories, and I will always remember that about territories, and I thought that was great great there. So, I don't know, Doc, did you have anything else about that portion of after the promo? Um, boy, I said, listen to, I was like, listen to that crowd. Lawler is re- really is the king of Memphis. Yeah, with Lance Russell calling it, it's just got that classic vibe to it, that retro vibe, man. It really was. Uh, Harper, anything else before I go to the Kevin Sullivan, who's coming up again? No, it's just, it, but uh, it seemed great to have it. That view of a sold out arena just looked great. Mid South Coliseum sold out. Man. Yeah, uh, it's just packed to the gills. Um, all right, we go from that. It's uh, Kevin Sullivan, another paid commercial. So here it is. Fans, this next tape is a paid commercial announcement. Smoky Mountain Wrestling is not responsible and does not necessarily condone any viewpoints expressed by Kevin Sullivan. So right now, let's go to that tape. Brian Lee, they say myself and my followers are heartless. But this week, we bring you good news. A man can live without a spleen. Brian Lee! You see? Thanksgiving thunder is coming! Coming! Commissioner Armstrong, (laughs) you brought in the Mongolian stomper. A man whose race tried to eradicate everybody in Asia. Asia. A man... That put fear in every wrestler's heart throughout the United States. Fear. Well, shut up. Get down from there. Get down. You see, and I like him, Commissioner. There's a point in a man's life when everything is taken from him. You thought you were just like the rest of the organizations. Strip him. Send him away. Put him in the closet and forget about him because he's too violent. Well, Thanksgiving Thunder, Stumper, at one time you were a violent man. At one time you were a warrior. Warrior. At one time ice ran through your veins. Thanksgiving Thunder, I'm going to add you as a notch around the rest of my family's neck, you see. We'll all be there, Stampa. They'll all be there. And you see, my people, they believe in me. You can't believe in that commissioner. Ask Brian Lee. (laughs) Fan Smoky Mountain. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the dude fell out the tree. Um, <laughs> uh, Hopper, go ahead. That guy takes his gimmick serious, huh? He sure does. The little sidekick guy. Yeah, man, he sure does. He sure does. He's he wants like, to be taken very, very seriously. I mean, just from listening to it, I mean, you can just picture him as this little guy and this little, just this little guy with the. With the little smirk on his face, and he 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 plays it perfectly. Well, and the thing is, you can't even see him. All you you can right. only hear him, which is which is funny. I mean, you you can't. I mean, you see him, you can't see his face. But uh, yeah, uh, Doc, your thoughts? Dominion climbing the tree, and then him telling him to get down popped me. I it just it did. <laughs> There's yes. No way around it. Yeah, um, you know. The other thing that I had on here is this wouldn't work if Sullivan hadn't butchered primetime Brian Lee to start it. Yeah, that's true. And so, I, I mean, I love these. I love these. These are awesome to me. And I, I can understand how some people wouldn't, but he seemed more serious in this one. Like, it's okay. He cut the fat on this one. And, like, let's get – we're get a week closer to the match, so let's get serious. I'm going to – I'm going to – I'm going to get my work in here. But the other thing I'm wondering, listening to that minion guy, is I wonder if that was the genesis, the seedling, the idea 
for what he took to WCW later and oh, put yeah. on Hugh Morris as the laughing guy. Yeah, because uh, Hugh Morris did used to do like that laugh. I mean, yeah, it's true. I don't. It. I'd love to have Sullivan on the show at some point and ask him I that. Bet you but, would. Only, yeah, only if he doesn't bring leaves the spike at home. Jesus, leave that Christ. fucking spike, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's good. No, that's that's true, Doc. I don't know. I don't know. But you you do make yeah. That that's it's possible. Definitely. I thought this was good. I really it. Uh, I don't know if just the audio does it for these segments and the justice, but it's still great. It's it's awesome. It, it, and then. When the guy falls out the tree and he hits him or something, because he because Sullivan hits him, yeah, <laughs> and he goes, and I, Bob Armstrong, I like him. He's talking yeah. about the guy he just smacked on the fucking head, or <laughs> whatever he hit him with. I thought that was good, so I loved it, loved it, real good. Uh, anything else uh, before we go to the next one? Good stuff. We got. Uh, did Did you want to hear this local promo, Doc? Was the rock and roll? Did you have anything from it? Uh, yeah, I think this is a pretty good one. I'd play it. Okay, here it is. The building between these guys, the Rock and Roll Express and the Heavenly Bodies. That's right. Falls County anywhere. Jimmy Cornett, get your Heavenly Bodies. Get them all fired up. Bring them on down. And me and brothers can do one thing. Take care of the Heavenly Bodies. That's right. Before I get into this, so I want to thank Channel 57 because I want all the parents out there to listen. Bring your kids on down here tonight at Hazard. I mean, Thanksgiving night, because all of them get in for 57 cents if you're under 12 years old. But to get back to what I'm talking about is you, Jimmy Cornette. This right here falls count anywhere in the building. Maybe even outside, Jimmy Cornette, because that's probably be running after your heavenly bodies, the great tag team that you say they are. But you know one thing that's on our mind, Jimmy Cornette, and that is to be the Smoky Mountain Tag Team Heavyweight Champions, baby. And that's what we're going to do. You see, Jimmy Cornette, you have done a lot of things with the Rock and Roll Express. Now it's payback time. Right here at Hazard, Kentucky, Falls County, anywhere. And remember one thing, Jimmy Cornette. Remember one thing, Jimmy. You're going to be out there, and we're going to get our hands on you, too. Okay, Doc, you wanted me to play it, so I'll let you weigh in. I, I just think. Listen to the fire and the edge in his voice because they're going for the belts and it's serious versus the laid back hillbilly chromosome missing version of what Tim Horner does when he's finally got his shot for the heavyweight championship. There you go. <laughs> Making That's fun nice. Of and yes. I was just thinking that, you know, for us, it's like, Jesus Christ, 57 cents. But you start putting it down, that's probably a week's pay for some of these people. Oh, God. I could see, like, I, I could see like one of these coal miners coming in. With like he went down in the mine and like stuffed a, a, a piece of coal in his pocket instead of like putting it in the bucket to go back up, and then he's like, "All right, I'll just pull out this coal and I'll pay with it." <laughs> You're so wrong. And so the door wrong. people, the door people in Hazard were like, "What the fuck are we supposed to do with this?" Nah, they knew this what to coal, do with it. This coal it is far. Yeah, it's worth money too, you know. Oh man. Okay, uh, we go from the rock and roll to uh, now it's uh, Ronnie Garvin, and he's out there modeling the robe uh, that now has a missing sleeve. Uh, just keep that visual in your mind as I play this. Here it is. Yeah. All right, fans, right here with me, Nitro Danny Davis, the man with the hands of stone, Ronnie Garvin. Hey, I know you guys You guys are pumped already oh. about Thanksgiving Thunder and the Handicap. Let right? me tell you something. Oh, Thanksgiving right. Thunder is going to be one fantastic week for myself, you know, because... Paul Orndorff, Paula Orndorff, let his hummingbird mouth. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you something. I just can't wait because we got that handicap match. And, you know, even if I was in a body cast with Ronnie Garvin as my partner, I would still come out on top. All right, Ronnie, what about that? I know you're looking forward to it. Also. <laughs> I'm looking oh, forward man. to it. I told you I was going to drive that guy nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Paula, she's going out of her mind, yeah. completely out of her mind. Now, how do you like this new role? Does it look beautiful? It looks great. Ronnie, that looks very good on you. Yeah, now, I'll tell you what. I've always given something to the fans. I've gave towels and stuff like that. Well, I'm going to raffle this one here today. We're going to raffle this robe here and have somebody win it. So, that's what we're going to do on All this right. program. We're going to have a raffle a little later on. All right, fans, we look forward to that. Right, right. now, let's go to the All ring. Right. Look, I want to point out that <laughs> Dutch is going to say something shortly about the whole raffling of the robe. Uh, but uh, 
I, th- this was funny to me. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was funny. I got a good chuckle out of it. Harper, what'd you think? They can't raffle off that road, man. That's not oh, theirs. Oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but you're right. <laughs> That's oh, not their property. It's stolen hey. property. <laughs> Doc, I'll let you chime in. I'm, I'm going to try to word this carefully. At this point in the show, I'm not interested. Right. Yeah, yeah. Very good point, because that's true. Right now, I'm not interested. However, I will be shortly. Um, check back in. Check back in later. Yeah, in a few minutes. Okay. Now we uh, we go from that to uh, Reno Riggins versus the Dirty White Boy with Ron Wright. Hey, hey Bob Connell points. Re- whoa, whoa, whoa! How does Reno Riggins get a title shot so fast? Well, you know, I mean, uh, Mr. Wright and Dirty White Boy were willing to give him a shot at that point. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. He's the fucking Tatanka personator. Yeah. There you go. Harper's got it. Yeah. He's got that Tatanka thing nailed down pretty good. Well, we go from that, and it's uh, Bob Cottle points out that the Dirty White Boy walks out, um, but the Dirty White Boy is not pushing Ron Wright. Um, Ron Wright is rolling himself out, and Cottle mentions there may be some problems here, but Dutch says, no, no, there's no issue. Well, during the match, uh, Nitro Danny Davis comes out to the commentary booth for a second. He mentions that they have the robe that they're going to raffle off later, and then this is when Dutch says what Harper just said. They can't raffle that off. They don't own that robe. That's stealing, and, well, I must say, Dutch has a point. Uh, Doc, uh, I'll leave it. Go to Harper. Harper, what are your points? What are your? Uh, what do you have to say before we go to the close of the match about what just happened with the robe? They don't know that robe. Yeah, that's bullshit, oh, isn't it? Trying to steal shit. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Doc, you got anything before we go to the close Harper, of the match? Harper's way more invested in this angle than I am. <laughs> Okay, well, we go to the close of the match. Dirty White Boy hits the Buck Snort Blaster and wins, but Horner comes out like the prick that he is and attacks the Dirty White Boy. Fuck him. Uh, then the Fantastics come out with Dixie Dynamite, and every time Horner throw, they're in the ring, and every time Horner throws Dirty White Boy to the outside and Dirty or Dirty White Boy powders out, the Babyface roll Dirty White Boy back in and give Tony Anthony credit because he's making Horner look like a million bucks right here. Um, and actually, at one point, to end this, Horner wins by, or not wins, but he hits the natural bridge on the Dirty White Boy, and Dixie Dynamite hits a 1-2-3 quick count, uh, to I guess to help put Horner over without putting the belt yeah. on him, which I think that's actually a genius way to do it, because you don't want to give him the belt, God forbid, if he were ever a Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight Champ. Uh, Dutch says, if he, this if isn't he wins, fair. If, 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 if he wins the belt at any point, we're ending the podcast. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dutch does say this isn't fair because Dixie is no referee. And, well, once again, Dutch is preaching the truth here. Doc, you got anything here? This would have worked awesome if it wasn't Horner. Because <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything about this was great, except I was watching Horner get over, and I just can't stand it. It's gotten yeah, personal they- now. It really has. It, it 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 really it really it really really and truly has. I must say it. It does. It's it's like I'm, I'm just tired of it. Go ahead, Hopper. You were gonna say something. Yeah, the crowd was fucking really into it. Boy, they were. They're into here's it. My... And look, yes, they are. Well, here's my note on that. The crowd's into it, but notice how many women and kids were in the crowd. And now, if you go to a show, go to a, go to like when go to ROH or something. Man, it is just. Fat pasty dudes with like Cheeto stained fingers everywhere. Yeah. Young Bucks t shirts too. Yeah. Young Buck or Bullet Club. Back then, man, it was broads and kids. What a couple of dudes who got drunk. Well, dudes liked it back then, but you know, it it just yeah, I, I get your point. I'm just hey, saying the any- ratio the ratio was way different. Oh, it was. Uh, did any of you catch the um the great dude from the fan from the Smoky Mountains who said who had a, a Tim Horner sign, and it literally says, White Lighting. Not White Lightning, White Lighting. Tim Horner will oh. get his revenge on the Dirty White Boy. It was I don't misspelled. Know the, <laughs> it was misspelled. The sign was, it says Lighting, not Lightning. <laughs> thought I'd point that Sound out. It out. Sound it out. Sound it out, motherfucker. 
<laughs> like in the back in the day yeah. <laughs> with phonics. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um okay, let's uh Doc, we go from that to a a very, very long down and dirty with Dutch. And I had asked yeah. you to take some notes on it. I'm gonna play it at the end of the episode. Reason being okay. is it's it's very long. I mean, this thing's over six minutes long. So I, I thought that it would be more effective if we Talk about okay. it now, maybe play it at the end. So, Doc, what did you have from it other than I think this is the one where Corny has a nosebleed at the end, too. Um, well, I, I – Wayne, I didn't even pick up on that. But I was, I did take some notes here and kind of walk us through what, we're, what we've got here, and it's Dutch. Back in the dressing room with Corny and the, uh, and the heavenly bodies, and – they're a little con- everybody's a little concerned at first because Corny's worried. Damn it, he's got to get in the ring, and and I don't know, you know, he's not a wrestler, he's a manager, so I don't know what the, you know. And so Corny starts talking, and all of a sudden he kind of starts talking himself into being a little brave and like, okay, maybe this isn't so bad, and maybe we will kick their ass, and we've got this thing figured out. So I'll stop there and say, did you notice that he started out pretty chicken shit, and then as he talked, he kind of got a little bit more brave in the first 30 to 45 seconds? Oh, yeah. He he, he started smelling himself. Yeah. And yeah. he started – and I, I mean that in a good way. I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. So at this point, I want to say – I want to – we really should have put this disclaimer out last week or maybe even the week before and certainly at the beginning of the episode. But I, I really – think no one should be playing the the Tom Dr. Tom hair fluffing drinking game because oh, you'd have is, been dead if you'd have did it during this segment this is bordering <laughs> this is dangerous here this is legitimately for a shoot dangerous don't do it you're not that tough you can't drink that much Tom is fluffing the shit out of his hair back there I mean he is working <laughs> that hair like nobody's business. So go back and once you see it, start cluing in on it. You can't take your eyes off of it. And you trust me, you can't drink fast enough. You just can't. Your your body can't process it, but you can't physically drink fast enough. He does it the and, whole time. Because you're really just drinking the whole time because he never kind of he never really stops. He just be guzzling. <laughs> so again, here's the other thing I wanted to point out. So now Corny is setting the stage and he walks us through the four matches. And we've heard this before, but I mean, I want to stop here for a second because I wanted to get you guys' thoughts because you guys have been in a ring and, and paid the price a little bit. Four matches in four nights of this caliber seems like a son of a bitch. Yeah, fuck that. I mean, so we've got the first night appears to be a false count anywhere. So you know, I mean, I think at one point it's either – this one, or maybe in a later one, he's like, I think it may be the later one, he's like, we may end up in the women's toilet, which, you know, is a precursor to the Benoit Sullivan a few years later. But a falls count anywhere. The second night is a Texas death match. They can have as many falls as you want, as long as you can get up to the, ten, you know, answer the 10 count. A Smoky Mountain street fight is the third night. So, you know, you can tell that there will be blood flowing there and we're going to cap this whole son of a bitch off with a barbed wire cage match so my thought my question to you guys is what do you think those guys are going to be feeling like going into that barbed wire cage match on the fourth night i actually think in actuality the cage match might be the easier one yeah depending on and i haven't i don't remember if there's weapons in the cage but the street fight in the Falls Count Anywhere might be a little bit more treacherous than the barbed wire cage. Not that the barbed wire is not bad, but at least you're confined within that cage. Right. It's, uh, but it's it's going to be a grind. It's going to be like when Arn said, I think you said it a couple weeks ago on the flagship show, Doc. Arn was like uh, the summer of war games, and he's like, we... We we damn near bled to death. What year was he that? He said we did. He said we did twenty one or twenty two war games in about thirty six days. He goes and I, he goes. I almost. He goes. I think we almost bled to death that summer. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, and obviously it's not going to be twenty plus matches, but you know they they're going. They're about to go through the grind, man. It's going to be on. <laughs> and uh, so, we won't. Spoil, so I they, don't want to spoil anything else. But yeah, it would be a hell of a grind to go through that four straight days. 
Because you know they're going to be, I mean, those guys are, those, all four of those guys are, whether or five, including Cornette as the manager, they are the most professional professional that you can ever be. They're not going to mail it in at all. They're going to go out there every one of those nights and give every one of those people who show up their money's worth, which means they're going to, they're going to kill themselves. They'll throw themselves right. or put their bodies through anything for those people. Right. To put it over. So when he gets through going through the four matches, now Corny starts outlining what's going to go on in his mind over those four nights. And he starts talking about, you wanted it this way. I We didn't we didn't ask for this, but we'll end it, God damn it. And you asked for it, and I'm not going to stop it. So when you're in there getting your ass beat down and you want somebody to stop it and you want the ref to stop it, they can't stop it, and I'm not going to stop it. And my note here is he's rolling now. He's now it's gone from he's forgot about having to get in the ring tonight. He's thinking about the Thanksgiving run and he's ready to go. And and my last note is at this point, Corny and in all caps is talking them in the building. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 so, a, and, a, and a, oh, go ahead. So the thing the lens that the good the thing of it is. Is the psychology of starting with, okay, later tonight I'm screwed and I'm scared and I'm worried and ending up with he's looking straight in the camera and saying this is the end of the rock and roll. And just how f- the different set of emotions he went through in that six minutes that you're talking about in the ride that you went on with him, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, go watch it back. His nose bleeds at the end. He worked himself up so much. And I think he's talked about that on the show at some point on his on his show. But yeah, he's bleeding. His nose is bleeding at the end. He got so emotional. He cut a six minute long promo that was uh, really good. So we'll play it at the end. Hopper, you got anything else before we move to the next segment? Oh, Harper. Oh boy, he's over there whacking off to who knows what now. In a second, he's gonna go. Hey, man, what you gotta? I can't be mean to Harper. <laughs> we'll move on. I'm sure. Either he's on mute. Harper, if you're on mute, we can't hear you. He must be taking a shit or something. Uh, let's go to... Uh, see, I need him for this, man. He wanted to talk what? about... There he is. Uh, Jesus, thank you. What happened, man? you have to go piss? Maybe. Okay. As you get older, well, When you get older, your prostate swells and it makes you have to piss more. Man, Fuck. you ain't lying. Really? I'm at that stage. It's it's hit me. Yeah, yeah, it's hit me. I got, I piss all night long. Okay, we uh we are now at uh the part of where this is Paul Orndorff, and I don't know if this is the this is the promo you're talking about, Harper. So we're gonna play it here, okay? Okay. All right, fans, and we'll be right now. Here is Mr. Wonderful himself, Paul Orndorff. Paul, earlier we talked to Nitro Danny Davis and a man with a hands of stone, Ronnie Garvin, about about this handicap match coming up. Well, let me tell you something right now. I don't ever remember saying I'd wrestle them both. I don't know what the Smoky Mountain Wrestling's tried to do, but they've tried to do everything that they can to, to try to hold Mr. Wonderful down. And you know something else? I can't believe that Ronnie Garvin and that Nitro Danny Midget brought my robe and brought it back to me. You know something? This robe right here. No, no, no. No, I don't care what they're going to do. I was watching back there. I knew exactly what they had in the bag. This robe here made Mr. Wonderful what he is today. The fame, the fortune. I've worn this everywhere. This is what made me famous. And I don't mind telling you right now that with just a little bit of work, just a little bit of sewing, that I can wear my robe again. And I'll tell you, it's going to be a happy day when Mr. Wonderful walks out there in this beautiful $15,000 robe. $15,000 robe, baby. That's what it's all about. What a dress. What is that dick got to do? He has completely lost it. The guy's gone mad. The guy's gone wild. It's it's a negligee. I don't have it. I don't don't have it. I don't have it. In the ring. Let's go up to the ring. Look, look, look who's in the ring behind you. 
There, we got Nitro Danny hey, Davis Paula, in the ring. Paula, Paula, and there he is. Road. Miss That's Paula. all I care about. This is a bunch of garbage. Listen to the guys up there, Paul. Miss Paula. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. <laughs> Do you have the panties to match? <laughs> <laughs> You're so gorgeous. <laughs> Get that break. Come on, man. This ain't right, man. I'm gonna lose it. Where's my rope? There it is. There's the rope. There it is, Paul. <laughs> and there goes Orndorff now, charging toward the ring. Out go Garvin and Davis. Any fans right now, let's hear this about... All right, uh, Hopper, I'll throw it to you first, because I didn't hear it. I didn't hear what you heard, yeah. but uh, go ahead. I thought it's like towards the end, you can hear him say fuck. I, I, I'd have to turn, I'd have to go back and watch it, but I, I, but, know, I didn't hear it, but it doesn't, it, he, to the point you made, that motherfucker sold yeah. that angle. I mean, we've been making fun of this shit, like... We don't like it, but to me, I really like that segment. I thought yeah. Orndorff worked his ass off and got that shit over. No one expected him to see that. and uh, I mean, you could tell by the crowd. No one expected to see him pull out some fucking Victoria's Secret lingerie. Right, right. I, it, yeah. It doesn't seem like whenever there's something to do with uh, – lingerie or fucking women or something something like this fucking ronnie garvin is involved in it from from when, when he dressed up as a woman <laughs> at fucking starcade back when he was miss atlanta lively <laughs> yeah i've got a, i've got a comment from the next match when he gives dr tom the wedgie it's like why is garvin right, always right. So sexual yes it's almost <laughs> like it's i don't want to jump ahead I, but i, I had the same <laughs> Oh, I bet, maybe I bet so. What we need to we need to do is get some of these old timers you have on the show and just hey, look, we're not trying to be weird or anything. But <laughs> like Garvin walk around naked in the locker. You know, you hear those guys and stuff. Was he one of those dudes or? Right, that shit used to drive me. Some motherfuckers just do dumb shit in the locker rooms. Motherfuckers just walk around naked, bro. Put some clothes on, man. Shit. <laughs> you were excited. Okay, whatever. Um. All right. <laughs> Anything else from that one? I, I look again. I thought he sold the shit out of it. I, yeah. I enjoyed that it segment. Popped, it popped. It popped the crowd. It was a good little segment. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it really was. It was. Um, Davis, uh, Nitro Danny Davis. You can't see it in the audio, but he's making a motion because Davis has the robe on, and he's in a ring like he's uh like he's a woman lifting up the back skirt of the robe, giving yeah. the guy easy <laughs> access. I thought that was hilarious. That part of it. That 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 kind of pop me so um we go from that to it is a dutch mantel dream match update nothing much here dutch just sends us to the ring so i'm not gonna play it but then then the heavenly bodies with jim Cornette versus the fantastics and ronnie garvin now Cornette is in his wrestling tights which is always comical the heavenly bodies come out first and then the rock and roll and garvin come out but as morton enters the ring it appears Cornette sprays either mace or something else in his eyes that Ricky Morton sells like he does best, and he just sells the hell out of it, and it's great. Uh, they go to commercial immediately at this at this point. Um, Doc, you got anything before I play the short promo from Cornette right when they come back from commercial? Why is the pelt back on? I don't think it's back on. I think he's just got the water polo. The yes, yeah. I think, I think, I think, and this is just a theory. I think Stan was like, okay, the pelt's gone, but so that the people don't tie in the fact that I was wearing this because of the pelt, I'm going to put the water polo helmet on. That way I can still sell the eardrum. Yeah, maybe that's it. So um, I don't think underneath the water polo helmet, because that water polo helmet pulls down pretty far. I don't think that the pelt was underneath that. I think 
we're just looking at the water polo helmet. And just uh, n- not much else on this match. It, w- it was good for what it was. It was fine. I, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I just they they announced during the match that the dream match next week will be Garvin and, and Dirty White Boy. I have not watched ahead, and so but if they just play that straight up for a while and let those two beat the piss out of each other, it ought to be pretty good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let me play the uh, Harper. You got anything before I play the promo from Cornette? Like right before they actually get into the match, like right after Morton gets yeah, maced ahead. or whatever. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> All right, and there you see something, and I don't know what that was, but it's some kind of spray out of the can that Cornette got right into the eyes of Ricky Morton. Hey! Hey! Robert Gibson's mother is a deaf mute, and Robert Gibson is a cripple, and Ricky Morton's blind. The only way they'll be able to tell when one another are around is by smell, and that won't be too hard because they all stink. Well, I guess we heard that. (laughs) <laughs> well, leave it to Corny to uh, <laughs> to, to do it. Uh, oh, go ahead, Doc. You got anything? No, it's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was great. It really was. It really was. Uh, okay. Well, uh, so now Morton was taken to the back during commercial by Garvin and Gibson. Gibson and Garvin hit the ring as soon as Cornette is done cutting that promo. Gibson and Garvin start laying it into the Heavenly Bodies, and there's something about whenever any combination of the rock and roll or the Heavenly Bodies are involved in a match, the crowd is still into it through most of this. Now, at the about the 43-14 mark, if you're watching along with us, Cornette gets in on the action and really throws some good punches on Gibson. Gibson yeah. fights back, though, and Cornette, do, Cornette does a great job of selling as usual. I, I'm going to say it again. Cornette probably was one of the most underrated managers as far as you don't remember him you might not remember him getting in the ring and selling and performing like you remember his mouth but i don't know how many people realize that about him he was really good at that part of it um soon after that exchange Cornette grabs his tennis racket and decides to take matters in his own hands by using it on gibson and garvin the referee calls for the DQ, which gives Gibson and Garvin a win. Morton then hits the ring and attacks Cornette. Uh, he throws Cornette to the floor, which Cornette hits hard, and then he chases Cornette to the back. We go to commercial. Uh, Harper, you got thoughts from here. Uh, uh, where's Killer Kyle at? He wasn't out there? No. I was thinking the same, was thinking the same thing. Huh. Uh-uh. Well, here's a question uh, for you all. Was... Has he, you know what we need to look for? This is a new venue. I wonder if he's at any, was he there last week? No. No, sir. Okay, uh-uh. maybe he's not at the taping then. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe he hit, yeah. Maybe he's not at the taping because if he wasn't there last week, we're at a new site last week. He's not going to be, yeah. He won't be there. He won't be at any of them at this taping. That's a possibility. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I know he's on Thanksgiving Thunder from if I'm remembering right. Uh, well, Kyle definitely... is going to be around for a long time, so he ain't going nowhere. He's just not here. Right, right, right. Uh, any th- Doc, you got anything from the match? No, good stuff. I mean, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I did too. Now, uh, we will go from that match, and I, w- I, I posted this on YouTube the week that we are recording this. Here is Cornette and just doing what he does best and insulting hillbillies, and he's got a food stand. He's got food stands Dude, out there, and this uh, is. I- Fucking! I, <laughs> I put a, I put a note on here because you you sometimes like to skip over the local ones. I put a note to myself to remind you to play this one because it's good. Yeah, this is it, this is great. It's on it's on our YouTube page too. If you just want to go watch the actual promo, uh, tinyurl.com slash btt youtube, and uh, it's titled something like "Cornet Insults Fans with Potted Meat and Food Stamps." Here it is. And a match where false count anywhere in the building, the Rock and Roll Express against the Heavenly Bodies. Get a close-up of this, Mr. Cameraman. Do you people up there in eastern Kentucky, you know what these are. They're all over the place, by the way. Sure you do. It's the currency of eastern Kentucky. It's a food stamp. I know you got a lot of them up there. So I tell you what, if they took these for admission at the Memorial Gym Thanksgiving night, you could get two of those little rugrats in for one of these. But, of course, they don't, so you're going to have to come up with 57 cents in American currency apiece. But I tell you what you do. Thanksgiving Day... After you sit down to that fine Eastern Kentucky tradition of the carving of the potted meat, then you come on down there to Memorial Gym, Rock and Roll Express, Heavenly Bodies, 
Falls count anywhere in the building. Tag team title on the line. And after you've enjoyed that Thanksgiving dinner that my Jefferson County tax dollars have bought your stinking family, then you come down and you enjoy the Rock and Roll Express getting slapped around like the stinking dogs they are all over the building and out in the parking lot. <laughs> after you, after you sit down and you carve up the potted meat. <laughs> Oh, okay, Doc. You said you had some comments. Go ahead. Not really comments. It's just you got to play that shit because it's fucking – I mean it's just bam, 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 awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yep. He's 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 speaking fast. He's sure of what he's saying. He's leaning into it, and he's he's fired up and ready. He's got a message, and he's fucking delivering it. Yeah, yeah, I, was yeah. like, I was like, what's in his hand? And I was like, this dude's got food stamps. <laughs> Back when you actually was, had a food stamp and not a food stamp card. And I was thinking, where did, who did he get the food stamp from? Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there was plenty of places to That's obtain nice. one stamp from around those parts. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, buddy, that was a good one. Again, it's on our YouTube page, tinyurl.com slash BTT YouTube. I've got it loaded there. If you ever want to go revisit it, I thought it was a real great one from Corny. Local promo. Um, you know, the, and the thing about these local promos is when and if the WWE Network finally does load all these up on there, these local promos aren't going to be on there. You realize that, right? Yeah. We're Dude, only going to get. Butcher. Oh, yes. Oh, it's going to be. I mean, let's uh, in here. We got an example. Mid-South. None of the local promos that are on the Mid-South shows. So that tells you right there that they they won't have them. So these are the the only way for these things to live on is through us uh, and, and whoever else has copies of them, and that's that. I don't have anything else from that. Now there is a local promo of sorts from Tim Horner. That shit is not getting oh. played here, and I don't want to insult the poor young man who had just had surgery uh, that they spotlight here. Uh, you know, uh, did I you hope notice he's that, doing well, well today? That motherfucker started to cry when he was delivering the the interview, the promo. Horner I don't was? mean the kid. I mean Horner. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I, 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 look, there's a kid involved here, so I'm I, I'm refraining from comment of any sort regarding this. Local promo with Tim Horner here. We'll skip it. And But you know what we're not going to skip? We're not going to skip this shit right here. For this event were provided by the Fairfield Inn in Johnson mm. City, Tennessee. <laughs> Quality accommodations and world-famous Marriott hospitality at down-to-earth prices. For a 60-year Marriott tradition of warm, friendly service, visit the Fairfield Inn. To make your reservations, call area code 615-282-3335. Okay, Doc. Let's Google it. <laughs> I, I'm way ahead of you. Because <laughs> you know what I'll happened be... last time we did this. No, no, the no, Super no, 8. no, 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 <laughs> no. No, this motherfucker, there's a picture. It's got... One four stories, um, and it's got four point five stars out of forty five reviews. Huh. Okay. So, so no stains on the sheets, no no jizz on the wall from people fucking their jizzabells. And, and here's something else that has four point nine stars with seventy three. So man, if we ever soil ourselves enough to go into the actual smoky mountains on a field trip for this shit we need to go to johnson city and stay there okay that's good to know so uh the johnson city hotels and motels but see this is an inn this is a fairfield inn that was a super yeah. eight motel i mean yeah this is a little bit classier you can find a good super eight if it's not in the middle of shit staying usa okay if you say so uh, but uh, so as for the Fairfield Incorporate rate, if you're ever in the area, because uh, it did say that on the on the, on the <laughs> bottom of it. All right, <laughs> I thought we were gonna get some gold there, and I, I was doing this on the fly. That said, all right, we'll go to uh, the 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 close. Uh, the Rock and Roll Express respond after the main event match that just took place. So here it is. All right, fans, with me right now, Rock and Roll Ricky. It looks like they're determined to put one of you guys or both of you out That's before Thanksgiving Bob, Thunder. Thank well, Bob, you know. Everybody can see the only way Jimmy Cornette to get out of a match with the Rock and Roll Express and with Ronnie Garvin is using the tennis record. Well, everybody knows that Thanksgiving Thunder is coming up this weekend. And let me tell you one thing, Jimmy Cornette, because this says this in the Bible. 
and I know it's the truth. It's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You see, my eye might be almost out. Robert gets his hand, might be almost broken. But let me tell you something, Jimmy Cornette. You are going to have to kill the Rock and Roll Express if you don't think we're not going to show up and be in that ring, baby. Because I'm telling you, Rock and Roll is here to stay. We're not here to play. You're looking at the new Smoky Mountain Tag Team Champions. All right, fans, the Thanksgiving Thunder Tour begins this week. Next week, right here, Ronnie Garvin and the Dirty White Boy with a title on the line. We'll see you then. So long for now. So, Doc, um, this was a good promo, but something I didn't think about as I'm watching this, and I know I've watched ahead a little bit, is I need to remember what the next episode looks like because I got a feeling the next episode was recorded ahead of Thanksgiving, but it's going to air after Thanksgiving. Thunder would have actually taken place. So I'm wondering if next week we're going to get one of those lame duck type episodes. If so, I'm going to I'm going to give it low disability checks and slam it cuz that's what I well, do. Well, what I'm what I'm aiming at is after we prepare for ne- for the next recordings, we need to look at it and see how much originality there is in it and if we can pair it with 45, maybe we do. Remember last time, what was it, Summer t- Glass or whatever we I'll did? I'll tell you like, what, I'll tell you what. I'll put you on that. That's your job for for now. You could go. You know, fuck you. That's nice. take take a, take a look at it and get back to me with your recommendation, and I'll tell you whether or not that's what we're gonna do. Well, it just hit me when we were, when I was doing this just now. Uh, any thoughts on the promo though? With that said, no, it's great, man. He's fired up. He he got he's standing out there with a Kotex over his eye because he's been blinded and he's pissed off and he's vowing revenge. They. Uh, Ricky Morton was he must really love Charlie Daniels because that the whole the eye for an eye and mm-hmm. the tooth and the tooth is from Simple Man. He says it every week. Yeah. Oh, I say every week. He says it every promo. It's like not, not a promo that he spits out that he doesn't say it on. Uh, my thoughts anyway. All right, Doc. I'm doing we're gonna. Some, hey, uh, hey, hey, I'm doing some looking here. Forty four looks pretty good and 45 looks like there's some recap uh of thanksgiving no of thanksgiving thunder oh okay so i think we're good i think we're just gonna keep on at keep it on keep it on okay yeah that's what i was trying to figure out i couldn't i couldn't remember off the top of my head so well i I thought i could put you on the case and it would take a week and a half to get an answer back or i could just do it myself in about eh, 15 to 20 seconds how many disability checks you giving this one hopper I will give it, uh, I don't know, uh, six, six point six, mm. six point seven. Okay, six point seven. Doc, what about you? Yeah, seven point four. I like this wrestling. Uh, okay, I, I mean, I don't think Harper's insulting him when he says six point seven. I'm six point nine. I I just think we're I think these I think these last two have been like set up episodes. We came off something extremely hot with Smothers and the Master finally being revealed. Yeah. And now we're settling in to the build up and the explosion of Thanksgiving Thunder and beyond. I think we're I think we hit the down part of the roller coaster, and it's not that it's bad, but we're about to Although we're about to come back up the hill, although we're at, we're on a high hill, we're just in the we're in the down part of the roller coaster that's sitting on the hill. So I'm going six point nine. But you don't you you yours. Why would you go seven four? Let me ask that. Um. Well, I think you've got the 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 main event match with a lot of stuff going on. I do as much as I don't like the overall angle. I thought that the robe angle did pay off. Uh, you did have. The stud stable give an interview. I enjoyed watching the Lawler and Stomper stuff. B, uh, P, uh, Primetime Brian Lee at home popped the shit out of me because it yeah. was so ridiculous. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, there's just a ton of corny just doing all kinds of work to get people into the buildings for the Thanksgiving Thunder Tour. So there you go. Okay. Solomon's back in the woods. That's true. That's true. 
I'm kind of with Harper though. I think we're I think we're we're we came down off the peak of the roller coaster and we're about to start yeah. going back up. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think that we're you know we're, we slowed down the last couple of weeks after some hot weeks that occurred. That was my only thing. And that's where I'm at with that. I just need to need to say this. Hey, we need some more five star reviews on iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes, pause the show right now for me. Go there, click five stars, write some nice comments, and then click yes by all the other five star reviews when it says was this review helpful. We'd appreciate that. The other part, you know the, if you, well, you, you, there's a problem with that. You say pause the show right now, and if everybody does that, then they don't hear what you had to say afterwards. Very good analysis. Would you like me to re-record it and edit that out then? Yeah. No, well, I'm not really doing can. it. You both can Fuck. Go, go to hell. That's also, nice. I need to get some more patrons. Go to tinyurl.com slash patron. Sign up. There's a couple of plans out there. Some of them are very, very low. Some of them are very, very high. However, whatever you give to us via the patron, uh, we would appreciate it. It's a it's a monthly thing. You get access to the patron episodes by doing so. You know, I want to thank people like Stephen CG72, Mike, Sparks Third Coast, M Wilson1175, Voodoo Moon, Baby Frog, Zeppelin, K Stone, 9702, Lone Wolf, Code Man 822, Jeff, Adam, William, Dan, and Jason, Dan V, David Wayne G, Twit Us, Matt, Armando, Cedric, Boone, and Marty. Thanks again for being patron members. We definitely appreciate it. The plans, like I said, they start low. You get access to the patron-only episodes that are a lot of times non-wrestling related, but hopefully they'll give you a good laugh. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash patron. And then shout out to the Hall of Fame patrons, William Shepard at ShepDaddy32, Marty Howell at Martin Howell 71 Tim Morecci at Tim Morecci, M-O-R-E-C-I, at uh, Codeman822, and uh, at Unconvinced Ray, our buddy from down under, uh, he's a he's a real cool guy on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, that's all right, Doc. That's just a, well, that's just an old penal colony down there, so it's just a bunch of criminals. There you go, um, playing heel as usual. Playing I, well, I gotta, heel as I, usual. I got a question about um, the patron thing. Mm-hmm. What's that? I just wonder if we take food. Food stamps are are we on the same gold standard as the Smoky Mountain Wrestling that food stamps don't don't we don't accept that as currency? Do uh, food stamps have a Visa or Mastercard logo on them? I think that's <laughs> the answer to I'll that do. nowadays is no. So the, that would be a negative, Doctor. These people doctor. have to have credit to to be a Jesus Christ. No wonder we don't have enough. Patrons. No, no, no. You don't have to have credit. Just has to have the logo. See, there you go, showing how smart you are. You're so smart, you're a fucking idiot. You can have a debit card. That has a MasterCard and Visa, card, Visa logo on it. Oh, 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 but I'm so smart. I know it all. How about how about we get into the payday loan business and loan these people money? And That's a there. great if, business to get into because you really rip people Jarrett, off of If that. Jeff Jarrett can sell people gold bars, I have a feeling that the three of us could have BTT payday loans. That would be hilarious. <laughs> be a great idea. We should try that. We should try that. Uh, but but I tell you what, we, we don't have BTT payday loans right now, but we do have tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. And if you are shopping on Amazon, that is a great way to support the show. Like, for example, if you want to get Bobby Blaze's Pin Me, Pay Me book or The Education of a Wrestler, uh, I kicked out on two. Go to tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. And whatever you're buying there, we get a little bit of a small kickback in return. It really helps me out because uh, I have to pay bills related to to this show doc just shows up and acts like he knows what's going on but in reality he has no clue so again tiny url.com slash btt amazon we would definitely appreciate it we got to give out some government cheese doc uh, so let's let's do so now um who uh uh doc who are you giving the government cheese to well i think he spoke like three different times he blinded somebody and actually got in the ring and took a couple of bumps i'm going to give my government cheese to corny Okay. Cornet gets it. Who are you giving yours to, Harper? Dude, mine goes to the to the uh, prime time Brian Lee promo because that's <laughs> perfect for fucking government cheese because that shit look fucking white trash as fuck. <laughs> Hard to argue. Yes. Hard to argue with that. Oh, oh, okay. That's the kind of expert analysis that you just don't get on other wrestling podcasts. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it to Kevin Sullivan again. 
Uh, I just like the whole in the woods thing, and the guy falls out the tree, and <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Sullivan smacks that poor bastard in the head and goes, Bob Armstrong, I like him, and look what I just did to him. Like, he murdered him. All he did was smack the shit out of him in the head. Oh, uh, so I thought that was really, really good. Uh, I'm going to give it to Kevin Sullivan. That That's probably only the second time we all gave it to somebody different. We did a, we did a couple of weeks ago. We, we gave it to someone different. So <laughs> Anyway, Kevin Sullivan gets mine. Cornette gets yours. And primetime Brian Lee, as Harper said in his white <laughs> trash, <laughs> government cheese, uh, gets the award. <laughs> Oh, boy. Hey, uh, I didn't do this last week. My apologies. Check out the wrestling podcast about nothing with the Kingpin, Brian Malonis, and Mike Crockett. Just search WPAN wherever you get your podcast from. They do uh, some They do some of the new school stuff, but they do also talk about some old stuff as well on their feed. And uh, another thing, too, you know, Bobby Fulton uh, has been a, wouldn't you say, staple of Smoky Mountain Wrestling to this point, Doc? He's been there since episode one, hasn't he? Since the get-go, since the inception. Since- Yep, Bobby Fulton is one of the Smoky Mountain originals. I mean, obviously Cornette is one, but Fulton has been there since the very beginning. And he was on our show a few weeks back. So if you only listen to the Smoky Mountain show, you might want to go download the flagship show and give it a try. I know some people tell me they only listen to one or the other. Well, I'm telling you now, Bobby Fulton was a guest. And I know in part one, we talked a lot about Smoky Mountain wrestling and why why his brother was chosen as his tag team partner and for Smoky Mountain Wrestling and not Tommy Rogers, what that was all about. It's nothing bad, but it's on there. So go check out the flagship show on Thursday nights. That's the Thursday show that drops every single week. And, uh, again, Bobby Fulton, parts one and part two are up. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, man. Our Pro Wrestling Tea store, the easiest way to get there is a uh, – is a Facebook page, facebook.com slash book in the territory. Please like that page. And while you're there, uh, click the shop now button. It'll take you to our pro wrestling tea store and get you one of those smoky mountain wrestling podcast t-shirts. Kind of like the one Jeff Bob had on our Facebook page that I posted next to the hands of stone, Ronnie Garvin, former NWA smoke, uh, NWA champion, almost at smoky mountain champion, but please do so. Harper, where you at on Twitter? CJH who that, right? Yeah, at CJH Who Dat. Uh, Mullen and Morton, if you're listening, Harper loves when you post the ring rats of the day. Yeah, uh, man. He took a couple of days off. I was like, fuck, bro. Did he really? Yeah. Okay. I got I don't, worried. You got, what'd you get worried for? I thought, man, maybe something happened to him. Well, this is the thing, man. This is, uh, again, we record these a few weeks out, so this would be probably at least two to three weeks ago before this airs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so he's back. He's back posting his rats. Yeah. Okay. We had the same taste. Do y'all really? Yeah. Which I is thick, thick, thick asses. Well, he. But I, from the ones I saw, he he looks like he posts a little bit of variety. Yeah, but you they're did? all kind of the they all go back to the ass. Okay. He's a, so what you're saying? He's an he's an ass man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Mullen and Morton, if you're listening, uh, uh, while, while you're there, uh, what did you say, Doc? Uh, what does he do? Fill up envelopes? What did you say he does in his day job? You you, I, you were mentioning? Something, meani- something menial, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, dude, you imagine that dude sits at work all day and just tweets, and no one knows who he is because he's I – mean, actually, not just him. Like, Stan Lane, fake Stan Lane does the same thing uh, at Denim Fritz. They all do that. Like they're all, they can tweet all day long and not get in trouble with their employers because they're anonymous. No one knows who the fuck they are, which I think is fabulous, <laughs> man. Oh boy, <laughs> this dude's—they're tweeting on the clock. <laughs> boy, all right, um, Doc. Uh, uh, well, I'm at Mike Five Hundred Four Saints on Twitter. Uh, lastly, but uh, Doc, anything else before we get out of here? All your begging's worn me out. Let's go. Fuck you, uh, Harper. What about you? Anything else? Let's go. Damn it. All right, y'all, that's going to wrap up Smoky Mountain Wrestling episode number 40 through, 40 through, 43 from November the 21st of 1992. Thanksgiving Thunder is upon us, and uh, we will be recapping that shortly in the next few weeks. Uh, as we always say before we get out of here, though, for Mike and Doc and Hard Body Harper, hit the tagline and get us out of here, Harper. Fuck it, bitch. I didn't mention the promos that are coming up. But anyway, there it is. Hit it again, Harper. Fuck it, bitch. <laughs>